Life is busy and many of us want to climb our family tree on the go. In today's video, we're going to talk about how you can use the Family Search mobile app to research your family tree when you're not at a computer to do it. So what I like to do is to start off by clicking on the left side button because typically when I'm on the go, I'm just looking for ways to kill time while waiting for my kids or if I'm stuck in a situation, well, you get the idea. So one of the things I like to do is look for ancestors with task. And what I do in order to get that is click the three hamburger icons on the left. Now, if you're using a, a Mac device, the icons will be a little bit different um, and the placement will be different. Then I like to do is hit ancestors with task. Now, depending on the Wi-Fi connection you have, it can take a long, long time to download. So keep that in mind. But if it downloads quickly, one of the things you can do is get in here and start looking for some of the names that you recognize or people you're willing to go ahead and explore. So I'm gonna look at Delbert Arthur Hankinson. Now Delbert is the biological um, father of my grandmother. He did not marry um, my grandmother's biological mother and the biological mother passed away and I don't even know if Gelbert knew about my grandmother Louise. But there's a hint for him. So where do I get to the hints? Because it's not right there. If I click on sources, it won't be there either. Well, before I click on what's the hints, Let's go ahead and make sure we get to know a little bit about Delbert before we try to figure out if the hint applies to him or not. The first thing we need to know is that he was born um, in 1887, and it shows us where. It tells us where he died. Um, and there's only two additional pieces of information that have been added to his extra facts about him yet. So in 1920, he was in Newark, Ohio, and then in the 1917, he was also in Newark, Ohio, because that was where he was in the military draft. So I still need to make sure that I look for the 1940 census, the 1930 census, the 1890 census in this part of the United States, it's not in existence. There are some fragments. So look for a link in the description below to learn more about the surviving 7, 000, almost 7,000 names that you might be overlooking if you think the 1890 census was completely de destroyed. But back to the case. So now I know a little bit about him. I want to go and check out his spouses. So Agnes Anderson was not a spouse. She was the she was the mother of his illegitimate child. So I'm not going to find any records for her. But there's a Lillian Gordon and an Estella D. Hoke. Y'all tell me in the description below what you think, how you think to spell that, uh, pronounce H-O-U-K-E. So I, these are his spouses. If I click on, since there's multiple spouses here, if I click on the little drop down arrows, I can see when they were married and the children they have. So there's a Gordon and then it, with Estelle, it doesn't look like they had any children because when I click on her, it goes back to the, the, the page. So no children there. So he just has one child with the exception of Louise, but Louise was adopted away, and so there won't really be any records to help us find Delbert using her. So we're going to go look at the parents, Joseph Joshua Wood, um, Woodruff Hankinson, Adeline Kramer, and then his siblings. Okay, so now that you have a rough overview, how do you go look at the hints? You click, you got to be careful, because if you click on this circle, yeah, I got to be careful where you click. If you click on this circle, it's gonna ask you to change the picture. Well, I don't wanna change the picture. I wanna click on that little blue icon right up there. And when I do, oh my goodness. That's a lot of hints. But remember, you're on the go, so I typically like to get the ones that are easy to look at first. So I'm gonna go to find a grave. And hit continue. Now this is the part that's a whole heck of a lot easier on a mobile device than it is on the family search uh, browser. 
And there's one other thing that I want you to make sure you do. So stick around because if you don't do this part, people in Family Search are going to be really mad at you and we don't want that. Okay, so we're looking at find a grape index. So we're at the top on the left under find a grape index or whatever source you find, there will be an option to actually try to look at the original record. Good genealogists try to always go to the original source. So we'll click on that and then it will ask me to open the web page and this will take me to my browser. And there is the stone for Delbert Arthur Hankinson in Lycan County, Ohio. Okay, so that looks good. So I'm gonna go back to family search and I'm gonna begin transferring information over. Now, this is what's exciting on the mobile app. So on the left, the birth date was listed as 1889. On the right, I have a date and a place. If I want to change information, I can click the edit icon and it takes me straight to where I can edit the date and then explain why am I changing. It, anytime you make a change on family search, be it the mobile device or the browser, you need to tell people why you're making a change. So I'm not making a change, so I'll just go back out of that. Um, there's a death date. The burial information I do want to move over. So I'm gonna click add and it pops right over. Um, there's nothing else to do. Ah, ha. That's false. The thing that you need to do is reason to attach the document. Hold on a second while I type a good reason statement. Page for Delbert Arthur Hankinson, period. The stone provides his birth date and death date, comma, though there are some potential errors. This information supports information found on his death record. So this is the start of a good reason statement. I'd like to tell what information was on the record that I found. The other thing I like to say is, how do I know that this is accurate? Well, in this case, it supports research that I already found, even though there's a little bit of discrepancy. Now I can go further and explain it, but remember I'm likely on the go, so I can go and improve my reason statement when I get home. While I'm on my device, I can hit done. Yes, attached to the tree. And now I've made a record attachment. So the next one I'm gonna look at is hopefully to find a record where it lists Delbert and some additional relatives because it's kind of cool what you can do here on the mobile app. So in the 1910 census, I found Delbert with some other household members. So I'm gonna go ahead and click compare because Joshua, remember I looked at that information at the beginning, Joshua was his dad and um, the other, the woman, Amanda, so is in here as well. So again, always go and look at the original record, look for any variances, look for any crazy spellings, um, look for biographical details that help you know about the family. Use your, on my device, I just spread it apart and I'm able to zoom in um, and find the family. So there we have Joshua and Addie. Addie, oops, maybe we got a mistake. We'll have to find out. Delbert and Katie. So we're gonna go, oh, and look, this is one of the reasons why you would go look at original records. Next door is a Samuel Hankinson. And Samuel is 69 years old and Joshua is 54. If I didn't know about Samuel, I'm going to have to go check out Samuel and see how they might be related. So always go to original records. So now I'm gonna start moving information from the record on the left to the tree on the right. And I can go ahead and put that arrow, yep, 1910, bringing over that source, absolutely. Reason to attach, let me go ahead and do that right now. So I have just added a reason statement. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, attach, but notice 
there's some more work that I can do. I can attach that one record to the other relatives. So if the record has not has been attached before, you're going to see where you're not able to move this dope over. So it looks like Delbert got left off from somebody doing research. Don't do that. Add everybody when you're researching. So Joshua is done and Addie's information is done. Adeline. Ah, I forgot. Her name's Adeline, not Amanda. And then we have the sister and she's done as well. But what's really great here on the app is that if you come across a record that has multiple names and you do not have those individuals in the tree already or facts about them in the tree, then in this source leaker, you can go ahead and process that information. Now, there are many other things that I can tell you about researching on the go, but with the mobile app, I like to just exhaust the hints when I'm around town and away from the house. Go ahead and try this, and if you have more questions, be sure to drop them in the comment section as part of this video. If you want to learn more about Family Search, go ahead and click the top playlist. And if you want to see our latest video, click the one right below.